Today, we've got our solo cross-country flight scheduled as part of our private pilot training from our home base in Frederick, Maryland to nearby Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We've done all our planning at home the night before, had our CFI check over it and endorse us for solo, and now we're ready to go. We've written out this nav log for the flight using the Flight Insight Excel-based nav log, which you could pick up a copy of at the link here or down in the description. What we can do for the flight is take the printed out nav log and fold it in like this to make it easier to read just the pertinent compass heading and timing information we need for the flight. We've got the route pulled up in ForeFlight as well, with waypoints corresponding to our visual checkpoints on the nav log, but we'll be primarily using pilotage and dead reckoning for this flight. Let's start with grabbing the ATIS here at Frederick. That's listed on the taxiway diagram as 124.875. It's a clear day with the winds at a 050. Runway 5 is in use, and we have information India. Next, we'll put in ground, which will be our first call. They're on 127.42. Let's also get tower on standby on COM1. That's on 132.4. Our CFI has drilled into us the importance of flight following on every cross-country flight, so we'll be setting approach into COM2 and referencing it later. The plate gives a frequency for approach, but we have local knowledge that the actual frequency in this sector is 125.52. You'll often see this around busy Bravo airspace with many frequencies where the one listed isn't always the best at a given time of day. We're going to set our route into the GPS. Again, we're going off piloted and dead reckoning primarily, but since we're solo and we have the GPS at our disposal, it wouldn't make sense not to use it at least as a backup. We'll just set our destination KLNS. The number one VOR receiver will be fed off the GPS then. On number two, we'll set some VOR frequencies we have mapped out in our nav log. The first is EMI, the Westminster VOR, on 117.9. We'll put that active and hit CDI to switch to VLOC mode. The first waypoint is on the 277 radial from Westminster. This will be our top of climb, so we expect to pass the radial and have the needle centered on the number 2 VOR when we're at top of climb. Later on, we'll use the Harrisburg VOR to identify waypoints, which is on 115.35, so we set that on standby. Now we're all set to call up ground and ask for our taxi. Let's think about how they're going to instruct us to taxi first. Runway 5 is in use. The clearest route to 5 is to go from where we are via Hotel, Charlie, Alpha, then Alpha 1. So that's what we'll expect. Now let's think of how we're going to make our call. We want to use the format, who we're talking to, who we are, where we are, and what we want. Frederick Ground, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango is at the terminal requesting taxi for northeast bound VFR departure with India. Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, Frederick Ground, runway 5, taxi via Hotel, Charlie, Alpha, Alpha 1. Runway 5 via Hotel, Charlie, Alpha, Alpha 1, 518 Foxtrot Tango. So we get our taxi instruction just as briefed and start making our way down there. The sim doesn't show taxiway signs here at the airport, but whether in virtual or real life, always confirm the correct direction we're headed on your taxiway diagram. The geo reference on ForeFlight is a huge help with this. We're going to omit any pre-takeoff checks and the run-up for this video, but ensure, of course, that you're working off all of your aircraft's checklists for all phases of flight. Now that we're at the hold short line, we'll switch over to tower. We can also put in our approach frequency onto COM1 standby now too. For a real pro move, let's put our destination ATIS at Lancaster, 125.67, onto COM2 active so that's ready to go when we get close. Okay, here's our call to tower. Frederick Tower, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, holding short runway 5, ready for VFR departure to the northeast. Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, Frederick Tower, wind 0505, northeast departure approved, runway 5, cleared for takeoff. Runway 5, cleared for takeoff, 518 Foxtrot Tango. Once we're on the runway center line, we can start our timer, which we'll use to match against our estimated en route time planned on the nav log. We're off, and we make our climb up to our planned cruise of 3,500 feet. Our planned compass heading is 054 degrees, so we fly that, which is essentially runway heading. We plan this first climb leg to take five and a half minutes and carry us seven miles. That was based on winds, airspeed, density altitude, and our Cessna 172 POH performance charts. As we climb above the class Delta airspace, tower gets rid of us. Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, frequency change approved. 
So we'll switch over to approach and we'll get ready to make our initial call and flight following request. We first start with our position and altitude. Some pilots will make the entire request right away. I think you can judge what to do based on how busy the controller sounds. Potomac Approach, Skyhawk 518 Foxtrot Tango, 5 miles northeast of Frederick at 3000 with request. November 518 Foxtrot Tango, Potomac Approach, Squawk 3144 and say request. 518 Foxtrot Tango requests flight following to Lima, November, Sierra at 3500. So we squawk that, making sure to also squawk altitude mode and meanwhile, we reach cruise and begin leveling off. Notice it took us only three minutes and 30 seconds to get there. The needle on the nav two isn't centered yet though, so we haven't traveled the planned seven miles. We just had a much better climb performance than we predicted. November 8 Foxtrot Tango, radar contact five northeast of Frederick, Baltimore altimeter 3022. 3022, a Foxtrot Tango. So with the words radar contact, we're on flight following and will be handed off to the next sector when the time comes. Leveled off in cruise here, we begin our first leg from the top of climb to the cement plant, which was a big hole in the ground for a quarry, which we see in front of us with the town of Union Bridge off to its left. That's what we'll aim for and that's where we'll pick up this flight in the next video, where we'll show the cruise, approach, and landing portions of it. In the meantime, stop by the Flight Insight page linked here and in the description to check out all our training courses and more today.